Hey, good to see you and welcome to another session here at the weapons terminal. I've got a little something different for you here today. Instead of covering a handful of builds in depth, I'm going to be presenting you with every single build that I currently have set up in my terminal. Why? Well, don't worry, I'm not planning to skip out on the videos for the latest batch of secondaries. They will be included here, but they will still get their own dedicated videos in the future. What I'm presenting to you here is the method in which I have my builds set up and how I use them from mission to mission, along with the complete list of every build that I currently have set up. You know how I have a ton of builds in all my previous videos? Well, I don't swap those in and out depending on how I feel or something. Most, if not all, are accessible in some form in the weapons terminal simultaneously. I'll be showing you all of those and how I have them fit together as the bulk of the video here as well as covering a bit of philosophy and why I have it set up this way. Lastly, I'll show you some examples of how quick and easy it can be to adapt to new challenges that the mission map can throw at you, and how it's not a hassle at all once you put a bit of time into it. But before I get started talking, if you just want to see the builds, then skip to this time in the video I'm showing on screen right now. You will be seeing each A through F slot on each class with the weapons laid out in order. The video description and chapters will list which builds are located in each segment. If you want a more detailed look at a specific build, simply head over to mycarl.gg and you'll find the build name you're looking for. The name, like I said, will be in the description of this video as well. Alright, off you go. That everyone? Yeah, I think I just saw the last one shuffle out. Uh, this stuff is going to be on the performance review next time. Just saying. Glad you stayed. Let's get into some general build philosophy, shall we? So, currently in the weapons terminal, we have six loadout slots. I'm sure you already know about those. They are, at the top, A, B, C, D, and F. At a cursory glance, these appear to accommodate six totally fleshed out builds. Which seems like a perfectly reasonable number, right? Wrong. Well, not like wrong, wrong, like that, that's, fi that's a fine amount of builds. But what if I told you that each of these slots can potentially hold three completely fleshed out builds each, and that's ignoring that you can have some variant builds that include secondaries and primaries swapped from each other. Assuming the basic three builds per slot, ignoring that it's possible to have multiple combinations like I said, that comes out to 18 builds total per class, and including all classes, a staggering 72 possible builds. While this still can't encompass every possibility at your disposal, it's more than enough to prepare for any combat scenario the Caves of Hoxies 4 can throw at you. And that's precisely why I do this with my slots. I will admit, I'm a bit eclectic when it comes to my playstyle and variety. I need to switch things up, even arbitrarily, just to keep things fresh for myself. Even if multiple builds accomplish the same goal during missions, I will still swap between them to try something new occasionally. This does not, however, mean that my choices are devoid of utility, far from it. Within each A through F slot, I usually have the builds grouped by general purpose, or at least loosely. Now, this isn't to say that you need to have every single slot filled out, or that you even need to use all of them when you do. But this type of configuration allows for the absolute maximum available variety of builds. It lets you have dozens of strategies, tactics, and strengths at your fingertips without having to constantly look at mods and overclocks every time you're in the rig queuing up for another mission. With enough time and practice, you'll be able to call on specific combinations from memory, making preparing for a mission less of a slog and more of an intuitive click-click-click process. Especially when you have what type of build in mind that you need for the mission that you're looking at right now. Uh, before we get to the part where I just show all the builds, I want to say, this is not at all me saying this is the optimal way you should be doing things. Some of you will only want to have two or three solid builds, and that's perfectly fine if that serves you well enough. I'm merely doing this to show you that it's possible to use pretty much every overclock and build type you want to, or even to prepare slots if you're looking for specific overclocks into the future. What I will postulate is that, at the very bare minimum, you have at least three builds ready-made to go even if you're lacking the overclocks for them. We're talking the general build shape, not this specifics here. Those three types are the same that I spoke about in my Mission Prep Part 1 video a while back. If you want details on those, go check out that video. As a quick reminder, balanced is your generalist loadouts with no specific leaning, crowd control covers large area of effect or even status effect focused builds, and firepower builds will lean heavily into the rapid damage dealing. Those will broadly cover your bases if you lack the variety or desire to really specialize further. With or without overclocks, mind you. Also, the variety I'm showing here has a dual purpose. 
On one hand, if you have most or all of the overclocks I show here, I hope this gives you a look at some things you can try out or even just how to structure your terminal to give you more choices to shake things up a bit. On the other hand, even if you're lacking many of the most popular overclocks, I want to show you some builds that I use that include overclocks you might have found so far. Part of the fun of this, in my opinion, is using what you find and making it work. Then later on you can acquire some more and start branching out into trying some new builds that you've been waiting to finally forge the right overclock for. Well, alright. Without any further exposition, I will back off and let you see the terminal. Skip to the time shown on screen now if you want to get right into seeing me show you some examples of how I use my build list config to adapt to new missions. If you're sitting through it though, enjoy. I'll see you in... Insert time here, minutes. Rock and stone.
Hey, welcome back from the weapon showcase part of the video, or welcome from skipping to this section. I'm tracking those of you who did, and will be sending write-ups for skipping company-mandated educational material. Check your employee emails. Back to business, I just wanted to give you a quick look at how I tend to use these sections in my weapons terminal. I know it's not mind-blowing seeing me select builds and stuff, but I just wanted to give you a look at how easy it is to change things and select what you want once you have a working memory of your loadouts. You'll notice that I don't list my perks and grenades for the most part in my build videos. This is intentional. Part of the reason is that I believe those should be switched up depending on the mission and not tied to a specific build. There are exceptions, such as Born Ready helping you reload slower handling weapons, or like IFG's assisting scout with weak point dependent builds, but I try not to pigeonhole myself into using specific perks and grenades every time, allowing for flexibility. If you notice many of my loadouts have the same perks equipped, that's simply because those are my default, or loadouts that I haven't changed since the last time I used that section. I didn't set them to anything specific for this video. The footage you're seeing here shows me changing the other aspects of my builds to suit the situation. If you have any questions about anything, just let me know in the comments. I'll be absolutely sure to get to yours. I hope these examples and the in-depth look at my weapons terminal have given you a resource to use. I have no problem with you just copying everything I did here mod for mod, but at very least I hope you'll use the method to start making some variety for yourself and seeing what scenarios you can build for. I definitely have not included every build possible, and your favorite playstyle and build might be still waiting to be discovered. Part of the beauty of our variety of choice and fantastic R&D department here at Deep Rock is that we can approach new problems in all sorts of ways, and there's a build and playstyle for every type of combat miner, or at least that's what I believe. The Caves of Hoxies 4 aren't going to go easy, so bring the right tools for the job, no matter what the job is. And as always, a massive thank you to my patrons. A Verdict Tallow, Axis Kronos, The Flannel Man, Flegelblast, A Flying Ostrich, Agent Maxwell, Infrared, Kyle Wee 21, Lee Trot, Loop Bugs, Auto Gyro, Raging Ripto, Sergeant Rattlebones, Steamstuck Dragon, Bug Snacks Trapper, Codex, Gabriel PBC, I Like Turtles, Theodore Argesh, Thomas Redmain, and Von Boomslang. I'll see you all soon, and until next time, rock and stone. Oh, oh wait. Hey, you coming? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah, it, it'll be no problem. I know I've been on leave for a bit for the instructional content, but I've had plenty of time with the new ordinance. I can definitely run it by them. Oh, it'll be fine. I know what I'm doing. I know how this stuff works. I've been using it every day for... Oh, shit! I'll, I'll, I'll call you back. Uh, hello? Yeah, yeah, we got a lithophage containment breach here in the launch bay. 26C. Yes. Yes, it's urgent. It's urgent. The the container it just um uh it, it just shattered. Yeah. I, I don't know what happened. Uh just just get someone down here and uh bring bring the vacuums. Hey, at least we know that the foam sprinklers work now.